June 12, 1892. Dear Martha, when the sun was sinking low in the sky, we decided we'd better find a place to camp. At the bend of the river, there was a little clearing on the shore with an orange grove and several oak trees. I said, this would be a great camp. We can eat oranges and it will be easy to find firewood. Daniel said, you're right, but what else? Why is this a good place to camp? There's something important, something you can't ever forget. If you grew up in Florida, you'd look for it first off. What was he talking about? I looked more carefully, squinting my eyes. I don't know, I said. He gave me a hint. The shore is much higher than the river. Why is that important? The shore is much higher than the river. I snapped my fingers. Alligators, Daniel said. You're learning the outdoor ways, Teddy. Soon you won't need me. He faked a heart swoon. Your poor old cousin will be left to linger and die, all alone. I love the sense of humor. I realized I never wanted to be left alone again. Now that I found my cousin, I don't want to be corny and say it out loud. But I thought, we are family. We need each other. We belong to each other. You know how boys hate that stuff? So I said, keep teaching me stuff. I want to know everything there is to know about living outdoors when I get back with Mama and Pop. Daniel got quiet. He never says much when I mention getting back with Mama and Pop. It's strange. Does he think they won't accept him? Does he think I'm wrong and they're really dead? Alphabert jumped out of the boat and scrambled up the bank. He loves to run and jump and chase squirrels and act crazy when we stop. As usual, he went sniffing all around the orange grove, barking and snuffling and digging around in things. Daniel said, Why don't you get a fire going? I'll go get us some supper. Right off, I looked around to make sure the ground was dry and smooth and didn't have any ant hills. Then I used a piece of wood to scrape out a site for our campfire. I gathered kindling stinks and some bigger pieces of wood. I got rocks from near the river and made a ring around our campfire. I laid out some matches one that had given us and started a fire. The trees were loaded with ripe oranges. I picked an armful and brought them back to our camp. I found a big flat rock washed it in the river and put it near the campfire. I used the flat rock as a table and cut the oranges in half with my pocket knife. The handle was worn from years of use, but the blade was sharp. Daniel wasn't back yet, so I got out some fishing line, a hook, a sinker, and found some crickets for bait. By the time he got back with a fat rabbit, cleaned and ready to cook, I had caught three fish, cleaned them, and buried the entrails. He grinned. The Bodanes are eating high on the hog tonight. He showed me how to find a long branch to hold over the fire to cook the rabbit and some for the fish. We ate our meal, drank our oranges, and peeled off strips of rabbit and fish for Ethel, who was making a pest out of himself by whining for food. I was sorry I didn't have any Wanda's hush puppies to give him. We laid at our feast, lapped up every little scrap, and licked our fingers. We didn't have any blankets, so I spread out my pink dress to lay on and gave Daniel my pinafore. I said, it's not a blanket, but at least your face won't be in the dirt. We built up the fire to burn during the night to keep animals away. Daniel lay on his side of the fire. I lay on mine. Ethel curled up beside me. I know how lucky I am. I have Daniel and I have Ethelbert. All is well for now. Love, Teddy. June 13, 1892. Dear Martha, can you imagine what it's like to wake up and your dog is gone? Yup, that's what's happened. Alright, Ethelbert was nowhere to be seen. At first, I thought he was just off snuffling in the orange grove. But he never came back, even when I called him. Ethel has never wandered off before. Daniel went immediately to the riverbank to look for the alligator tracks, but there weren't any. We called and called and searched the orange grove. By this time, I was beginning to panic. I said, Daniel, I cannot continue without Ethel. I won't leave him. Daniel said, We're not going to leave him. He's a dog. He's probably off exploring or chasing squirrels. I got my slingshot from my bundle and Daniel got his. He grinned. We walked through the orange grove. Daniel cut a long leafy branch and held it out in front of us, waving it to the left and then to the right. I said, what on earth are you doing? He said, I'm saving your life, Teddy Bodane. An orange grove is filled with the biggest spiders you've ever seen. They're called banana spiders.
They won't kill you, but they'll scare you to death. At night, they build their webs from tree to tree. Without this branch, you might run into one. I shivered. You know how I hate spiders? From then on, I walked behind Daniel. Just to be sure, I picked up a few pebbles along the way. If I was going to be attacked by spiders, I wanted to be ready. When we walked almost to the end of the grove, we heard voices. They were coming from a clearing up ahead. Someone, a man, was talking. He said, Well, if this isn't my lucky day, they say the chickens come home to roast. But in my case, it's the dogs. Look what I found. A dog whimpered. I knew that whimper. It was Ethelbert. A woman's voice said, Xavier, let him go. But this time, Daniel and I were almost to the clearing. I saw the red and yellow wagon. Dr. Zorin was holding Ethelbert by the scruff of the neck. He said, Get my cage. Without warning, I burst out into the clearing. Angrier than I'd ever been, I shouted, Get your hands off my dog! Ethel twisted his neck, trying to get away. Dr. Zorin said, How dare you! Who are you to come into my camp using a demanding tone? He peered at me, as if trying to remember where he had seen me before. I repeated, Get your hands off my dog! Dr. Zorin said, You are mistaken. This is my dog. I said, The constable gave him to me. He is my dog. Daniel grabbed Dr. Zorin's arm and said, Mister, if you know what's good for you, you better give us this dog back. The next thing I knew, he was switching Dr. Zorin with the leafy branch. Dr. Zorin bent forward trying to get away from the branch, but still holding onto Ethel's neck. I reached for my slingshot and one of the pebbles. When Dr. Zorin bent over, I put a pebble in the sling, pulled it back, and aimed for his behind. Dr. Scre- Zorin screamed, Ow! With one hand, he grabbed his rear. With the other, he tightened his grip on Ethel. Ethel squealed. At that exact moment, the biggest banana spider you've ever seen jumped from the branch to Dr. Zorin's face. Martha, I have never heard anyone scream that loud while beating himself in the face with both hands. Ethelbert, Daniel, and I ran back to our campsite, doused our campfire with water, and jumped in the boat. Ethel sat in my lap, shaking. It wasn't until we were at the least a mile away that Daniel and I started laughing. A banana spider saved our sweet Ethelbert. What a day. Love, Teddy. June 14, 1892. Dear Martha, Finally, we came to Silver Springs, right on the river. We needed food and other things, but we didn't have a penny. We tied up Wanda's bow and tried to think. We needed money bad. I said, I know you've seen this bracelet that I wear every day, but I can't sell it. He said, did your mama give it to you or your granny? I said, no. For some reason, I didn't want to tell the story of Athelia Tomlinson and her husband. He said, I wouldn't ask you to sell it. It's about the prettiest thing I've ever seen. What about the boat? Wanda said to use it however it would help us. We needed money. We needed food. I said, try to get some money for the boat. I'll go look to see if we can find work. We agreed to meet at noon, when the sun was straight overhead. The town seemed friendly enough. I walked to the feed store, the dry goods store, and the dentist. No one had any work. There was a calf, and the smell of the sausage and chicken they were grilling out back made my stomach rumble. But what I saw in the window of the cafe was worse than being hungry. There was a poster in the window with an artist's picture of a girl and a boy. The girl had braids and looked something like me. She was wearing a gingham dress. The boy had shaggy hair and looked like a little like Pop when he was a boy. The poster said, Two runaway children, sought by their heartbroken parents, please notify Jimbo and Verna Dudd in McNappy. I wanted to run and hide. I looked around for Jimbo Dudd. Was he here? Was he watching me? Would the sheriff recognize us and put us in jail until he could return us to Jimbo and Verna? Daniel found me. He had a proud grin on his face and $15 in his hand. He said, look what I got for the boat. I said, great, look what I found. I pointed pointed to the poster. He said, why do I get the feeling that poster has something to do with us? I remembered he couldn't read well. I read, two runaway children, sought out by their heartbroken parents. 
please notify Jimbo and Verna Dad and McNappy. Daniel said, Uh-oh, now what? I said, We can't think when we're this hungry. Let's get something to eat and then we can come up with a plan. We'll have to spend carefully. This money will have to last. We bought three big sausages at the cafe, one for each of us and one for Ethel. Ethel woofed his in three bites, then looked at me with begging eyes. The cook had a big ham bone and sold it to us for three cents, so Ethel settled down happily to eat his bone. Daniel and I each got an ear of corn to go with our sausages. My stomach growled noisily. We felt much better after we had eaten. I said, We've got $14.57 left. Let's go to the store and buy what we need to get us through another day or two. Then we'll get out of town. When we got to the store, Daniel pointed to a poster in the window. He said, Looks like a circus. What does it say? I read aloud. Ringling Brothers United Monster Show Great Double Circus Royal European Managree Museum Caravan and Congress of Trained Animals Here for two days, now hiring boys. Must be 12 or older. Must be 12 or older? I looked at Daniel with my I've got an idea look. I said, Could I pass for 12? Daniel said, You could pass for 12, but you couldn't pass for a boy. I said, Want to bet? Love, Teddy.